Welcome, this is our Tuesday, June 7, 2016 edition of the Government News Brief. In the news, sexual abuse cases are being addressed at one-stop centers, GGMC working to make mining safe for workers, and progress on a national cultural policy through consultations. I am Azim Khan with the details of these and other stories. Stay tuned. Thank you for staying with us. Here are the details. Reported cases of child sexual abuse being treated at one-stop centers. More in this report. The Child Care and Protection Agency received 193 reported cases of sexual abuse for this year, all of which were reported to the one-stop centers. The one-stop centers are intended to deliver programs to children and families affected by trauma due to sexual abuse. Director of Child Care and Protection Agency explains. The cases will be in our reports and we will refer to the, the one-stop the one center and the DPP too sometimes with some old cases she too will refer to the center. So there are referrals all the time. The, if you look at the data, you'll see the most reported cases of abuse is neglect, followed by sexual abuse. We need to stop abuse generally from occurring because it's so devastating for children. So yeah. every every day almost, if you count it, you'll see it's almost a report a day. In addition, the one-stop centers cater work to strengthen relationships between children and their families. It also gives children who are victims of sexual abuse an opportunity to tell their story only one time in the presence of investigators, counselors, prosecutors, and welfare officers. Victims of sexual abuse, sometimes they have to tell, they have to tell the pain and the hurt so many times. So we really try to allow the children to only get to tell it one time. So this was established, this multidisciplinary theme, that we all will get together and let the child tell it one time, it will be recorded. And whoever needs to see it two, three, four times, they will have the opportunity to do that. But the child will only tell it one time. Two non-governmental organizations, ChildLink and Blossom Inc., manage the five one-stop centers that are in operation across the country. The centers also provide services in the form of forensic interviews, crisis intervention, counseling, trauma-focused therapy, parenting sessions, child and family advocacy, and education and prevention activities. Renetta LaFleur for the Government News Brief. The Guyana Geology and Mines Commission is currently reviewing a number of reports from stakeholders towards making mining more safe, especially for workers. Find out how in this Tiffany Rodius report. Regulating the mining sector is the best way to reduce deadly accidents, says Minister of Natural Resources Raphael Trotman. So we'd like to go back to the laws. Of course, not all of them are applicable now. There are going to be some complaints, but we believe that a rules-based system is what is best. So it's going to help us to, to curb and hopefully reduce to zero the, the incidence of accidents. The Guyana Geology and Mines Commission, the regulatory body responsible for the mining sector, has been tasked with enforcing these regulations. Trotman said reducing debts in the mining sector has been a challenge for the ministry. So all of those are right now with the Guyana Geology and Mines Commission and they are tasked with going through them, seeing what can be implemented. Some of them will take time, some could be immediately implemented and uh, that review is ongoing. Reports on mining debts have been submitted to the government, including recommendations from the Guyana Women's Miners Association and the Gold and Diamond Miners Association. The mining sector has operated under a lax situation for too long, Minister Trotman says. The government has since adopted an interagency collaborative approach to regulate the sector and help reduce debts. For the Government News Brief, I'm Tiffany Rogers. Local technical vocational and education training TVET is being geared to meet the needs of industries in Guyana. We have more in this report. Deputy Chief Education Officer with Responsibility for Technical Education, Patrick Chinidu Unruziriki, says that local industry stakeholders are now playing a key role in the formation of the local TVET syllabus. This input, he says, will boost the program and update the curriculum to meet current and future economic challenges that confront Guyana. 
unlike when we do curriculum here, we just sit down as educators and we write a curriculum. That is no longer the case. We will invite the industry, for example, in our automobile industry. We invite those industry we think or we know are operating and practicing in that industry. We call them, we say, guys, we want to develop a level one and level two program for this in this area. What do you think are the set skills that are needed for somebody to operate, let's say, for example, um, an entry level um, technician? He explained that the stakeholders are not only providing feedback on the curriculum, but they're also part of the assessment arrangement. At the end of the day, before the children are given the certificates or deemed competent, this practitioner will have to come in and look at what individual judge would have done. We call them external verifiers. They will go into our institutions to verify what was done. And they will determine whether what we did is rubbish. I say, look, throw this away. I say, yeah, yeah, this child, we believe this child can perform at this level and this time. And that child will be given that certificate. So in essence, it's no longer what we do or what we think we do. It's what the industry need and how they need it. A memorandum of understanding, MOU, has been signed between MacCorp and the Linden Technical Institute, LTI, for the development of heavy-duty training for mechanics and vehicle technicians. This is being done in accordance with what the industry needs. They're not just giving us the finance or probably the tools or what have you. They are training our teachers, our trainers, as to what is expected. They are taking our trainers to their factory or their workshop to let them know how it's done, what is the latest technology. Now, they have their trainers going into LTI, working with them to ensure that the facility we are building, the workshop we are building, meets the standards. The Council of TVET and the Ministry of Social Protection are also working on a labor market information survey that will further lead to development of more demand-driven TVET programs. For the Government News Brief, Paul McAdam. Culture plays a critical role in the development of any country, and formulating a solid policy requires extensive consultations. More in this report. A number of consultations were held in 2014 and 2015 to garner input and feedback on citizenship, culture, the environment and religion to properly frame the cultural policy. Ruel Johnson, advisor on cultural policy, says the consultations proved fruitful. The feedback was fruitful enough for me to be able to define um, what we call a, a culture and development agenda, which was absent from previous um, manifestations of cultural policy. In fact, I, I haven't seen any national cultural policy from the ones that I perused that have a specific component that deals with culture and, de and development in a direct way. Areas of focus which include the environment, education, citizenship, cultural heritage, preservation and protection, and creative industries development have been prioritized. Johnson explained that the diversification will play a major role in developing the cultural policy. He pointed out that Guyana's ethnic makeup can be an example to the developed countries. We've had the experience. We can actually teach these fairly homogenous nations about diversity, how you manage diversity, how you represent diversity. Well, first of all, we have to, of course, build our cultural and creative industries here. The completion and implementation of the national cultural policy can take approximately five to ten years. The last document considered a national cultural policy was created in 1977, written by the Director of Creative Writing in the Institute of Creative Writing, A.J. Seymour. For the Government News Brief, Seneca Thorne reporting. Indigenous students get quality education in Georgetown through collaboration between the Ministry of Education and the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs. Here is that report. One of the challenges the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs is facing in bringing students from the hinterland to the coast for a better education is accommodation. Minister Lowe highlights the Ministry's plans to curb the problem. We're looking for a consultant to design another dormitory. And that dormitory will be for GTI students and UG students. We haven't decided on 
what structure of the system will take yet, but at least the building will go up and they know that they will have somewhere to stay. Another challenge is improving students' ability at mathematics. What I'm hoping to do is that very soon getting some of my young friends who um, left UG and will have time in um, August to let us form a little um, organization and call ourselves something, um, hinterland math tutors or whatever, you know, just to go up there for August to teach them math even for one month or three weeks or so. Minister Lowe is suggesting that indigenous language be taught in schools as an academic subject since language barrier has also contributed to the problem of students understanding mathematics. Just like how you choose to take Spanish That's right. and um, Portuguese and French and German, we should have indigenous languages like that so that you can you can decide that you want to learn Patamona or you want to learn Wapishana. So when you go into there, you could speak to them and they would understand you so well. Over the past year, the government has heightened emphasis on the development of indigenous people with specific emphasis on youths. The Billion Dollar Hayes project was launched to train and equip youths with the skills needed to empower themselves. For the Government News Brief, I'm Tiffany Rogers. That concludes this evening's edition of the Government News Brief. The details of these and other stories can be found on our website. Subscribe to our website and YouTube channel to be kept abreast of the latest developments. You can also like and follow us on Facebook. The Government News Brief is a production of the Government Information Agency, GINA. Do join us again tomorrow as we bring you another edition of the Government News Brief. Thank you for watching.